really. Fun was all right. Plot twist. Could you see yourself living there in the future? I can see myself definitely living <laughs> in North Wales in the future. We speak the language of heaven here. Uh, <laughs> so everything about the place is pretty perfect, actually. Yeah. Probably the best thing about Wales, I think, is just the scenery. Like, you can be walking down the street and see the mountains or, like, even just the community. Everyone's so nice in, in Wales. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, sure. there's, there's always someone who will come and talk to you, even if they don't even know you that well. <laughs> or it's a total stranger who will come up and speak to you, so in many ways that kind of reminds me of home because yeah. it's similar in Yorkshire, so it's nice to have that sort of sense of walking down the street and bumping into someone you know. I think it's a brilliant place. I don't know. I think it just grows on you. It's, it's probably different for every person. I think before I came here, if you asked me about Bangor, and said there's no cinema in Bangor, I would have probably said I'm not going to Bangor, but I guess the mountains and the sea have a way of growing on you. I think North Wales is beautiful, like in the summer. It's a bit, it can be a bit distressing when the weather is bad, but like right now I love it, and seeing the mountains and going for walks like John was saying, and it is really handy that you can walk everywhere in Bangor. Wales is the best place ever because I was born in Wales. Yeah, well, I, as, as you know, I also think Wales is the best place ever, hence um, why I'm now living the dream and living here, especially like working in London No, living in Bangor, it's the dream. Yeah, I guess Llandudno was like your best place. That's ever, my best place it? ever. I've got pictures of it on my wall at home. You never yeah. even thought about that. No, I know. But you are working. My, in as a child, my dream was I'll grow up, become a teacher in London No. <laughs> I've lived it. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in the parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, but tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. So I like, talk to people and be like, God is great, isn't it? And they're like, yeah, he is. And then you get yeah. to like enjoy that and like be like with people who are on the same wavelength as you. And you get to just relax in that. I find like having the same sort of heavenly minded way brings you close together in other aspects as well. Because you know, I don't just feel more on the same wavelength as other people. So like when you talk about like I don't know, films and music and like everything else that you enjoy in your life, having the same heavenly mindset brings you together in that area. Because underneath that, well, you, you're aware that there's that deeper connection. Do you know what I mean? So now most you see is watch True Detective. And <laughs> <laughs> Just one minute you could be like playing a game of articulate, and then you're talking about like predestination. Predestination, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And being able to, I guess, when you're with people who aren't Christians, it's almost as though. Which isn't right, I don't think. But you feel like you can't talk about the truths that you know, like as freely as you mm -hmm. can. Like, um, and really, I think we probably should be able to. Mm -hmm. But but we're like nervous or whatever, um, and nervous to offend and whatever. 
but um, when you're with people who you know believe the same and, and you can you can just talk to them freely about that and you don't have to like kind of consider maybe what, you, what we're saying as much and like and, w and when you're telling people oh I'm really grateful to God for this they actually know what that means it's nice that, that they can like rejoice with you over the same things that God has shown you rather than like just think it's a bit weird whatever, I've benefited um, tremendously from having um, fellowship in that aspect where I can be frank about things I struggle with, things I'm working on, things I've overcome and whether it is challenging something in our life that needs to be challenged or encouraging us in something that we're doing good. I think we all need words of affirmation spoken to us and it's great having that community of community of people that just love each other so much that you know, they want to see each other grow and it's not really a competition, it's just each person helping the other person up and I do not suffer from helping another person out, I do not lose out on anything. In fact, if anything, I gain something from seeing another person grow in their journey with Christ. Especially when you're a Christian, like you've come away from your home church and mm -hmm. everything that your faith is based on at home, kind of thing. And you come to university, and it's the first time you kind of exercise your faith independent of those things. Yeah, like, it's kind yeah. of like the test or something yeah. like. Um, and that's where having things like this you come in, I think, as well, mm. because they can help you in your faith. I've really enjoyed. I think I've had a lot of support from people this year and last year, like when I came here new. A lot of people were really kind and like taking me in, and obviously you were forced to. But some of the other people as yeah, well, like I even kind of yeah, you were obligated, but some people voluntarily even as well, mm -hmm. which is surprising. Um, so that I really, I really appreciated that. Like it's so important to connect with people who's going who are going through the same experiences as you, like the same age as you, same kind of pressures put on those people and like just to like group together every week and to just focus our attention on God um, even with all the assignments and all the drama like just all getting together and just encouraging each other praying for one another. I think it's good how the CU has been supportive and like not just promoting a Christian clique mm -hmm. but like showing the importance of showing love towards other people and you know, even if they don't have the same belief as you or anything, you still can have things in common and that that could potentially bring them to Christ, but like being their friend and everything, that that's showing love, that's being a Christian, like it doesn't mean closing yourself off from the world, it, it means living in the world. And it's really good to see that people are aware of that. I mean evangelism is hard enough as it is, so it's really helpful to have a CU that's driven towards it and people who are willing to acknowledge that it's not easy, but at the same time, it's something Jesus told us to do. So intense. <laughs> gives us an opportunity that if we weren't part of the local church we wouldn't have to impact like our local communities whilst we're here in Bangor. It's like 
going and serving people in Mars G or wherever it might be. Mm. Uh, mm. We had that opportunity there. But it's nice to go back to reality, like after student life, and to see people living normally and living their lives normally and trying to like apply what they know of God into their life. And it's nice to like be able to be with kids and be with youth and be with like the variety of ages and see how they love God and see like what that means to them. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, so we're like we're tasting that little bit of heaven, like on it, like by being in fellowship with one another. And like it says in the Bible, like we're one or two come like in God's name, He'll be there. And like you do feel your, His presence, like when you're with Christians. It's so cool. Being a Christian isn't easy. We all know that, but. What makes us hack at it daily is the support of the community and on the one hand there is the Holy Spirit who's giving us strength every day, but at the same time we also need other people, people who are on the same journey as us and people who are willing to hear you out and when, you, when you're in doubt, when, you are, when you're facing a struggle, people who are willing to hear you out and if not provide an immediate solution, at least listen to you. I think that's, that's great. So I guess the basics, and one of the biggest thing is learning uh, humility, as in the being humble enough to give up control, I think has been uh, the most <coughs> difficult thing to learn to do. As good as I am as a speaking, and as much as I can encourage efforts by talking, and maybe people who are a bit quiet are trying to get conversation out of them and stuff and introduce them to people, it's kind of a downside as well, because unfortunately my mouth runs off on me. I can be quite... Gossiper, maybe you could say. I say things sometimes and you can't take them back once you said them. So for me, my biggest challenge is learning how to only use my mouth to like speak to people rather than like and to encourage others and to praise rather than to <laughs> disencourage and to say mean things. It was, was amazing to me and it is every year because for me it's this huge 
huge family that loves Jesus and that loves me. And I don't know, it's just, it's hard to say I don't want to cry, I want to keep it down, but um, I don't know, I just, I just want to say that thank you to everyone here, because to me, I love every Thursday when I come and see you guys, and on Sunday mornings at church when I see you around Bangor, because you really are a family to me, and I love every single one of you, so thank you very much. Because there is such a, a emphasis on like drinking and drinking lots at uni, and like especially when you've got work as well, because it really like messes you up if you lose like a few days, just even sometimes, and like I don't know, it's just so hard because it's it's expected of you to drink, and if you just like do it once, then it's like right, you started, you're gonna carry on drinking. Yeah, yeah. It's really difficult sometimes. That's something that that was something that was kind of God was speaking to me on because I was like I during first year second year I drank a lot I'm not gonna lie and I went out a lot and um, it it kind of didn't register me as like a bad thing which was really weird because I was like I'm still like walking with God and I was still seeking God and I saw in my church back home everyone was, like all the young people were drinking anyway so it was kind of like oh it's clearly fine <laughs> I think we should be an example and like because like now, it, personally, I don't drink anymore, but that's because it was me being personally convicted not to. Because it wasn't showing God in a great light, it wasn't showing me as a Christian in a great light. One of the big things has been just the fact that in the CU there's so many different denominations and so many different viewpoints that it's been good to have more than just the one opinion that you sort of get at your home church. So we've been able to like rub off on one another in so many good ways but also like learning how to read the Bible and stuff like that in its proper context rather than just opening a Bible on a Sunday morning and taking a pastor's word for it, that this is yep. the interpretation of that perhaps this is our interpretation and all the other denominations who interpret it differently are wrong. Mm. It's just, it's so nice to have these core beliefs that we can all agree on in mission and then there's different things that we can agree to disagree on without sort of getting at each other. Yeah. Everyone knows that they're right. And then when you realise that, you think, actually, no, I'm wrong. Do you know what I mean? Mm, like, yeah. the chances are, if I think they're wrong, I might as well be wrong. Like, so why not just continue on? Mm. I think it was really cool, like, in House Party, when Mo McCracken was talking about, like, how, I think it was his exec, but, like, spent loads of time complaining that this guy was bringing a sound phone in mm. to worship. And then they realise, like, why are we spending so much time fussing about the xylophone? Yeah. Like, there are much more important things. Like... There are much worse instruments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it was like, that was a good, like, teaching for us to have that mindset of, like, stop being stupid, stop, like, yeah, like being caught up on issues. Yeah, like, seriously, spirit. No, like, <laughs> it's more important that we share Jesus with people. Not like our opinion on what songs to sing, mm. what style. When you become a Christian, you know how your identity is, is in Christ, and mm. that's all marvelous. And you don't have to worry about who you are as such, because who you are is in Christ, who's the Son of God, who's in heaven with God. Like, mm. that's exactly. Pretty good, I think. And that just enables you to make relationships with people, and um, you can make friends with people who really annoy you, um, and you can really come to love them. And so can we stop the phone because I don't want to <laughs> sit in the same room as her anymore. It's a bit like living the dream coming to university as a Christian because you get to do Christian work all the time, which is incredible. Mm. But at the same time, for me, it's been realising that even though I'm a bit older, I'm not any less sinful. In fact, probably more, m a lot more sinful. Yeah, you're um, more, <laughs> more, more and more, just like... getting worse and worse. Whereas maybe when I was a child and a Christian, I hoped, you know, when I'm living the dream and, you know, doing Christian work and stuff, maybe I'll be like better, a better person, but I'm not, so that's very, mm. that's the main lesson. That's okay. Because of grace. Yeah. And Jesus. Mm. <laughs> I initially came here from Aberystwyth Uni, um, which is a 
There's no effort. Rising and flying do. A question that arises in one's mind is, but do we fall to die or fall to fly? If by energy then I have more days without it. When I was in first year, I didn't know very much about it at all. I forgot that it was on even, and then second year and third year, the difference. Like each year, we've just seen the CU get more on board with it, and the CU is always kind of getting more the importance of just sharing God's word. And it's God because it's complete, a complete difference, um, and we've been able to reach so many people. Like last year was really great for people inviting the housemates and stuff. This year we've been really great at just getting random people living off the streets and stuff. Which shows how God uses things differently. If if we can pack out a pen route to a point where people are standing because they want to hear someone give their testimony. Yeah, there's, there is no limit with God. We just have to trust him. We've just been, like they just keep growing. And like the work is always built upon. And like as the sea always build upon what they've learned the year before like we can just keep on improving mm. but it's like one of those massive snowball things and mm. it's like <laughs> and it just gets bigger but you mentioned prayer and i think prayer has been something that the sea has seen the importance of more like last year we started the prayer yeah recently. that's very cool it hasn't been so big in the mornings this year but i think on the whole we learn more the importance of depending on god in this Mm. You know, and, and growing each other, and I, I love that, and, and been watching God go and do that through successive generations. The young become the older, uh, and then teach the younger. Uh, it has been fantastic, you know, uh, and seeing God move in that, and the different trials and uh, the different now testimonies that, that people can say because of that, it's been fantastic. Can 
I quality control some toast? No, I'm doing nothing. I feel like... Can you quality control Daniel Gallagher because he keeps eating our... Uh, oh, that bit. Ah. It's a third year of drama. I'm still... I'm still correct and you still don't know. How to say my own surname. Yeah, but re- do you remember how you claimed that there was a pronunciation guide in your family crest? I'm glad to be starring in this movie. Yeah, I The narrative that we often buy into is about self-expression, how individual expression is the highest fulfillment we can achieve. And in our culture that's done through doing anything that makes you happy. That's the slogan, you know, you, li- you only live once. There's also a lot of hopelessness in this generation because people can't attain to the perceived levels of what a good person is. Mm-hmm. One day we will realise that the things we do to get meaning and purpose, ultimately they are empty. That God-shaped hole that Pascal talks about in every person's heart, we can fill it with all the adventure and all the things in the world, but at the end of the day, if we're truly wise, then we will discover like Solomon that all is vanity. It's really important now because you keep reading like the statistics of like how many people sort of our age have depression or uh, struggling with self-esteem. We're just lost in that rat race that we can't escape, we can't see. The truth remains that we are all sinners and if we look in our lives we can see that there's things we want to change. We, you know, we really want to love our friends but then we still get jealous of them and we really want to like only have happiness for people, say, when they get a job or a new relationship or whatever, but there's still sometimes maybe a bit of jealousy or envy and then, or like, we really want to just love our friend, but then we still get angry with them. So we can see that there's sin. We can't fix that ourselves and thousands of people spent years and years trying and we can't, but God can. And God said, actually, I know how much of a sin you are. You don't have to try and pretend it, try and cover it up and then sent Jesus to die because of that. So sent his own son to die for the fact that we were sinners and there was nothing we could do about it. He then rose again and now his righteousness, all of his goodness, is on us and we're in like white clothing. Maybe if we all walked around today and were perfect, then maybe someone could say always the gospel's still relevant, but there's no way that's true. So this is obviously relevant. The only person who can truly give us that satisfaction and that joy and that it's not dependent on outward circumstances is Jesus and his message. Now, you can live your life and you know that you're secure in Christ. It doesn't matter that you will mess up or 
doesn't matter what you achieve or what you don't achieve. It's because you are in Christ, you are loved by God, and you have eternal life. You don't have to do anything, it's done, it's fine, it's, it's over. It's... It is very freeing to um, yeah. be able to feel that, I thought. <laughs> it's like, in, like those open world free-to-play games when you finish the story, and then you just get to do what you want, and it's great. <laughs> Except like a million times. I don't, I don't think I think on that enough, like on the fact that it is secure and it's not like, still, still sometimes like, worry, and then, but that's stupid because then it's putting your confidence back in yourself, because at any point that you think, oh, maybe I, maybe I don't have salvation, what you're actually thinking is, what can I do to get it, but that's stupid because it's, obviously it's all down to God, otherwise we'd never have had any salvation in the first place. Him eternally getting to praise him till the end of time. Well, they won't be end of time, but uh, that, that just blows my mind. Just to be actually there in the presence of Jesus and like with millions of believers who've gone before us and of our generation as well, and any future uh, believers, like we can be there praising, praising our God in his presence just for who he is. There's not going to be any other priorities no. to pull us away for celebrating Jesus and all that he's done. I'm really looking forward to not being a sinner. Yeah. <laughs> like, that would just be incredible. And just be like, have the like, just total love for, for people and for God. Whereas now, I want to be praising God, but, but I'm such a sinner and like there's so many other things that will come into my mind that distract me or that you know, that I doubt or whatever. I've, I've fallen into the same trap where, you know, I'm more worried about my studies, my future, my my social interactions and what am I going to do tomorrow, what am I going to do next week? And God is trying to shake me up and say, dude, you know, you're worrying about the little things. You know that thing you're worrying about today? Well, you're not even going to think about it tomorrow. Heaven will be never-ending and etern eternal and we will have those things those good things and that they will continue and we won't have to be like thinking oh i've only got a week left or yeah. this person's <laughs> leaving on this day i have to go and try yeah. and find them and say goodbye to them or whatever yeah. it just shows so much of we weren't made for this world mm. this world is beautiful but it's not how god made it like initially in the sense of there's still so much wrong and mm. in our hearts and in the world our life here is not the end of it and we might have an amazing life here, we might not have an amazing life here, but it doesn't matter because that is not the reason for which why we are saved and that can provide hope for someone who's poor and destitute in Africa and it can provide hope for someone here in the UK who's having a comfortable life and I find that very puzzling yet rewarding. This verse is Isaiah 40 verse 31. Um, it's just those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Everything will be made new. And it's like we'll have bodies of young men, but the minds of wise old men. We understand that it is God who we put our hope in. And he just like makes it all okay. You know, as cliche as it sounds, it's just like it's gonna be, it's just gonna be perfect. Looking forward to it. <laughs>